Juliana Onishuk. Okay. The act of creation is what drives us Ukrainians forward in this battle for peace, life and independence. War made us reconsider the way in which we should develop our energy system in Ukraine. My name is Yuliana, I am Ukrainian, and before war I was living my normal life, working for an energy company and building solar power plants for commercial purposes. Now, I live a rather complicated life, in the country where we were yet still building solar power plants, but for people. It is an honor for me to talk to you from this stage about how Ukraine should or rebuilds its energy system, transitioning from traditional energy sources to renewables. Before Russia started destroying our energy system, we had no idea how dependent we are on one source of energy. Centralized energy system is too vulnerable. It is very easy to attack, repeatedly leaving us with no power for up to 56 hours this summer. By losing one nuclear power plant, which is now occupied, the Parisia power plant, we lost 20% of our generation capacity. And nuclear was and still is a leader among the energy sources in Ukraine. Then we have thermal power plants on coal, some hydro, renewables. 1,900 rocket attacks happened for the last two years in Ukraine. They robbed us 35 gigawatt of generation capacities in Ukraine. And you may ask, so what's the plan? From centralization to, sorry, and I wanted to add that in total, the loss of the energy system is 51 billion euros. So how do Ukraine transition from this, from this situation? What do we do? What we are trying to do right now? From centralization to decentralization and technologies. Amidst the war, Ukraine tries to transition to clean energy while ensuring its energy securing energy security at the same time. We need to ensure that electricity is supplied to every house. How do we do that? Through, first, synchronization with the EU energy market, implementing energy storage technologies, developing decentralized energy sources, and flexibility. I would like to tackle each of these uh, points separately. Synchronization of Ukrainian energy system with EU energy system physically happened on the second week uh, of the war. If not that synchronization, Ukraine would stay in a black, total white country blackout. Under immense pressure, we managed to plug into the energy system of European Union, and we did it not within one year, but within a few weeks. Now having this possibility to trade, to receive import, to export, we are able to stabilize our system, to stabilize system of bordering countries and in ensure the trade, which opens a window for more generation to, uh, to build and to develop renewables. Energy storage technologies. It is, it is now an absolutely new market. Ukraine is launching energy storage markets, 
And comparing to 2021, we had one megawatt of installed capacities of storages that were uh, connected to the grid. Now, Ukraine offers to investors 1,099 megawatts of energy storage capacities to be built in upcoming years under exceptional conditions. And that is a know-how of Ukraine if you're comparing to European countries, because country offers investors long-term contracts with a fixed price and with the possibility to prolong the start of the operation of the energy storages. And we see that the energy market in Ukraine is booming at all levels. I call this slide um, uh, flexibility. However, if we talk about flexibility and digitalization in the customer relations in the EU, we usually uh, we usually talk about demand's response, that you receive a signal on your app um, that the prices are high, you, uh, you are flexible in the way you consume your electricity, and you can save your energy bill. In Ukraine, digitalization today means that through smartphones and programs, chatbots, Viber, WhatsApp, Telegram, we receive a notification that tomorrow, maybe, you will have an electricity for a specific time. And that makes us adaptive to the situation we are living in. Technologies allows us to be more flexible and actually to survive right now. DSOs, distribution system operators, have the graphics of the, uh, the schedules of the blackouts, let's say, and for the last three months, we have, we have downloaded these schedules 23 million times so that we can survive and see when actually we can do our home, home cooking stuff and so on. But talking more about flexibility in Greece on the other side, a group of the DSOs in Ukraine for the last two years have repaired 16,000 kilometers of grids. Grids were the, at the, the aim of the attacks in 2021, 2020, in 2022, 2023, and thermal power plants in 2023 and 2024. So it's been already a year as the DSOs are repairing the grids instantly, and there is not much you can do to protect it, so it's easy to attack too. But nevertheless, the government of Ukraine and also privately owned DSOs are trying to build it in a new way, already introducing smart grid concepts, already looking for investments and projects that can introduce that. And we have our first digital twin, a virtual grid, um, in the Kyiv region. We never had it before war but now we have it on the third year of war. Decentralized energy sources. Ukraine now adopted the program that by 2023, we would like to have a 27% of share of renewables in the general consumption of Ukraine. Solar is a leading industry, then hydro and wind is also coming. This year, we faced an unprecedented case of storage market booming, hybrid solutions everywhere. Households, apartments, industries are implementing solar plus storages to be self, to be independent, to rely on yourself only. And uh, the phrase of the business this winter that is coming is that it is only you that you can rely on when, when, when there is a question of electricity supply to your house. And this is exactly what we do in Energy Act for Ukraine. Already nine times we have proved that hybrid solutions for schools and hospitals are effective. Our schools have been working during the blackouts for up to eight hours. Solar is enough to cover consumption up to 50 percent. 
And we continue doing that. And this is the school in Kiev region. This region was occupied during the first months of the war. The school was destroyed, robbed, uh, partly damaged. They, need, they had to change all the roof. Um, there was no windows and so on. We, just, we finished the school six months ago together with our partners and donors. And now 2,000 pupils go to these schools and they can continue their education. Interruptions of electricity supply do not affect their lives. We, co we connected bomb shelters, kitchen, outdoor lights, interlights, a gym, so that they, so the kids can live their normal lives just as before the war. Because this winter is going to be worse than the last. We are now lacking nine gigawatts of capacity, and it will take us another five years in a positive scenario to have it. This is the act of creation. This is the transition to clean energy that enables life at the darkest time. Thank you.